So the car started up fine as I thought it would. However, the comfort access is still not working properly, but I didn't think that was gonna fix it. Uh, but so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up, uh, should really be another video on its own, but uh, let me incorporate it into this. I might actually split this video up for this one and I'll kind of split this for another one. This is how we check the BMWs for codes. Anything that happens is stored in the DME, which is the digital motor electronics, whatever it's called. We use a laptop. You um, decided to use a standalone laptop. This is an old Lenovo given to me by my mate. Well, actually, he didn't give me, he sold it to me uh, with the software, with the BMW software, the official proper BMW software. Um, and you also need one of these cables, which connects to your OBD2 port, which is there and this. So we're going to hook up and we're going to see if there's any errors or the errors. Now the thing is with, um, you can get an ordinary OBD2 tester which will work fine but there's a lot of codes and a lot of things you can do with the BMW software which you can't. This is not Kali, this isn't anything else, it's called Rheingold. Um, it's, in that it's got a suite of programs called ISTA and INPA. Uh, if you know BMWs those are things which you'll go, oh yeah I know. So what we first of all do is like that. and we plug, this has got two positions, you can never remember which one works, but you can tell when it'll either work or it won't work. And that plugs in there, you see you've got that, you see, oh it went off, but there's a little LED which comes on to the port. Now, it's important with the Rheingold software that you don't have any antivirus software on there. No firewalls, no nothing. Just a standalone machine. Um, there's nothing on here. If this machine gets trashed, I'm not really worried about it. This is a maximum memory it can take, but I need to swap this out for an, uh, an S, uh, SDD card instead of an HDD. Right, that's uh, ISTA. It's the actual proper BMW software. Sof software. Um, and we choose, let's go a bit closer, sorry about this guys, but I, I wanted to show you this, right? Read out vehicle, now, connect the vehicle interface, which is this, then switch on ignition, so we have to put the keys into the slot, see the keys are, oops, keys are there, we take it to the first one where you've got the exclamation mark, okay? Then we do oops, complete identification. Continuous recording will now start. Sorry. There we go. And what it's doing is it's pulling stuff straight off the, the car DME. And this is another way you can check when you when you buy a BMW if there's any issues. Uh, as long as you've got the right cable. The cable is about 50 bucks. The VIN, it's convertible, engine label, engine type, engine codes, what the level of software is on there paint code, everything. It, this is the initial thing it's pulling. So, now what it's doing is pulling the fault codes. B, these are the codes. Green means it's okay. A red means there's a code on there for whatever reason. So, let's see, they've got one. You'll always get some kind of code. Some codes are kind of garbage. Some codes are really important. And I do this like once once a month with my servicing to see if there's any issues. I really apologize for the, the shaky hand. Now, what we do is we go here, display the fault memory. So I select that. And these are the codes, right? Look at these codes. These are what I call bullshit codes. It gives you the BMW code. Now you won't see this on an OBD2. S0087. Now this says is no communication possible with controller joystick. And that's the joystick underneath there. Rain light sensor, safety module, telephone control unit, front passenger seat module, most gateway. Most gateway, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's fine, that's no problem. And message, 
meet kilometer radian receiver con something blah blah blah. It also tell you the mileage it brings it out. Now this one is one one six nine eight nine, and funny enough, if you see here, is one one six nine eight nine. So these are bullshit codes because clearly the the controller joystick works, okay, and uh, the rain light sensor I know what does work. The the sa uh, safety module restraint system, that's the um, the uh, the seat belts, right? The t telephones, I know I've used the telephone. So basically, all of this works, and there's actually no error messages. Okay, so I have no idea why we're getting these bullshit codes. So I was kind of hoping there's something in there which is causing a problem. It could also be this cable. It's a possibility that there's a problem with the cable, uh, or something else. It could be a setting with the ISTA. It's called Ista Plus. This is a program I've been using. So that's what I was trying to. I wanted to show you. Um, so uh, it, that hasn't fixed whatever it is, but this is irrelevant to the comfort access. And there's no comfort access codes, as you can see. Now, what we do is we can now uh, delete the fault memory. No, oh, another thing I want to tell you. Sorry. This will tell you the mileage it's done. It, it, it the error comes in. When you clear the codes, if a code is constantly coming backwards and forwards, it will tell you when it first happened and how many times. So this is actually quite good. But every time I connect it up, this code only comes on on the mileage I've connected up. So it's something that's happened. It could, it could be nothing to do with the machine. It could just be the cable or something. I don't know. And I've tried the different settings on there. But anyway, so let's uh, delete the fault memory. So that's what we called clearing the codes now any work you do on this right if BMW and especially if you've got a car under warranty if you use this software other than like with the difference from Carly or anything else they know don't know that uh, Joe Bloggs has screwed around with the, the car okay because this is only proper BMW software so they will see that the codes have been cleared when they put their stuff on but as far as they're concerned, all that anyone's done on that is the um, uh, is a uh, is an indie, so they're not worried about it. But if you use Carly or Kodi or do anything with anything else other than this or Inpa, they know you've done it. So be careful if your car is still under warranty. Now I'm just going to cancel that because actually I couldn't find what I wanted to find, and I'll try and find it later. But this is what I wanted to show you. A good thing with this is it will tell you what your battery is like. Now, as I've reset everything, it won't really tell me much, but I wanted to show you so we can evaluate. This is also where you register the battery. You know, sometimes people will say, oh, I bought a battery, but BMW charged me like 400 bucks to change it. Well, they charge you like three, 400 bucks for the battery, but they also charge you a couple of hundred bucks to register it. It has to be registered. There's a whole load of stuff on, on, on BMWs on Google. Just Google it up, but basically you need to register batteries. If you do not register the battery, then it will either overcharge or undercharge the battery, and you're going to be in a world of pain. Okay, um, so this is something you can do with this software. So let's go to evaluating the battery state of charge, and we go to uh, power management ABL. Then we go to next. Check the state of charge. Over the last five days, it's not going to show much because it. Uh... Oh, another thing I want to show you here. It shows you the last battery exchange. So if they been tell you say I oh, will change the battery and they didn't, it's there. But I know my battery's changed. But when you reset the DME, that zeroes out. Okay, hit continue. Continue. There we go. Because I pulled the battery, right? Actually, it's, it's still this. No statement possible. Check the battery supply from the from the IBS for loose contact. That's I think because I reset the um, I reset it, so that's not not bad. That's okay. Uh, two days ago, it's sixty two percent. Three days ago, fifty nine percent, sixty one percent, sixty four percent. Okay, so that's the the state of charge. So, and that says here, state of charge of the battery is too low. And that's probably right, because actually, because I'm not using the car, I'm just moving the car backwards and forwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the charger in today. 
I'm going to check the, there's a histogram recharger. Let's do continue. I'm surprised it stored it. Never mind. So, this is the state of charge, all right? So they go 0 to 20%, 20 to 40, 40 to 60, 60 or 80, 800%. Obviously, this is better. So, can you see here? This is how long it's been in that charge. So, the majority of the charge for 1637 hours, it's been in the 60 to 80 percent range, which means the battery is good, right? If majority of the time was in this bracket or this bracket, this bracket, I'll be looking to see if the battery is charging. If it was in this bracket, I would be looking at definitely changing the battery out. You don't want it to get down there. This is why every month if you do is you can check your battery. And uh, yeah, uh, here, here we go. If the, the it's reset, if we reset the DME or do a battery exchange. So anyway, dudes, um, we checked under there to make sure there was nothing happening. Nothing's happening there. It hasn't fixed the problem. I didn't think it would. Those code weird codes are coming, so there could be something else. So what I'm going to do uh, in my next video with the with the so under that glove box uh, under the in the engine bay is the uh, there's a like a well where there's like the water can go in um, it's kind of covered and you've got the DME there and water can get in there and also during the winter if the vents block up then ice builds up and water goes everywhere and iced and melted and it's nasty so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, the there's a there's a cowl. I'm going to take the cowl. I'm going to have a good look there to see it again if anything is happening. That's the next stage. That's the fuse box. And what the reason I looked at the fuse box is because they replaced this. But on that corner, and in my next video I show you, there's a bit where they haven't put properly. And I'm also getting a howling, which I think has got to do with that the the cowl underneath the bonnet. So I'm going to take that out and see if any water's coming gone in there. And that's how I also cleaned the, the fan, because I sprayed some stuff in there. So, uh, we'll see, see you on the next video. Um, I hope you like this and learn a little bit. And, um, yeah, that's it. So, if you can't be good, be careful. If you can't be careful, name enough for me to be Jay and Joe. Peace out, you and see you. I love you like that. I'm out of here like a Tiffany night. See you for part three of this exercise. Take care. I'm gone.